What I love about being a scientist is that we have the tools, the knowledge, the capability, and the curiosity to really dig into and want to understand those challenges that exist in society, in people's homes, and in companies, right now and in the future. And as a scientist, I feel that I can really make a difference. At 3M and personally, we believe in inspiring, educating, and nurturing the next generation of scientists and engineers. We want to help them as they develop their scientific abilities. We have a lot of programs at 3M where we do this, and all of these are volunteer programs that scientists at 3M do because there's very little that's more satisfying to a scientist than to be able to take an area that they're passionate about, apply their own um, skills and ingenuity, and use that to make someone's life better. The advice that I would give to teachers who are counseling students about analyzing data is, Make sure that you plan time to analyze your data and interpret it. It's not always as straightforward as you think it is. The best executed experiment is meaningless until you collect the data and you can tell a story uh, from that data that comes from it. I know I like to have my, I say I like have my fingers in the data, so I plot it, graph it, do statistical analyses, run regressions, and I, I run all of that before I make any conclusions so that I get the whole picture of what the data story is trying to tell me. Because when you analyze it from one perspective, you may draw one conclusion and as you start integrating those other perspectives that you gain by the additional analyses, you can develop a much richer picture of what that data is trying to tell you. Graphing is a really wonderful way to do that because it, um, I think your brain processes the information differently than, than table data does. I've got what we call a time series chart. And these are really useful if you want to see how things are changing over time. You might use this in a manufacturing environment to say, we changed something in our manufacturing process. Is that, are we seeing a reflection in the change in properties of the product that we're producing? And does it still meet the requirements that we've outlined for it? So on the Y axis for this type of chart, you have your response variable, your Y, which is your dependent variable. And on the X axis, you have observation numbers. So this would be a series of samples. They're presented in time order. So on the left side of the graph would be the earliest ones, and on the right side of the graph would be the most recent ones. In this particular example, I've got three different samples highlighted. And what you see is they're, they're delineated by the vertical lines. What you see is there actually is a real change in the average of the data and the range of the data as you go along. And this would be one of those situations where you would have to think about your process and those measurements and what they mean and say, yes, statistically those are different, but are they meaningfully different? Are all of these within our specification or not? The other thing I'll call attention to is in the third sample on the right-hand side, there are two data points that fall below what's marked LCL, that's lower control limit. What that means, with those being outside of that limit, is that they are statistically different from the rest of the data set. We'll see those highlighted on the box plot as well, um, but those have been flagged as, um, as being statistical outliers from that data set. Taking that same data, I wanted to illustrate it two more ways to show you different perspectives that you might get on the data. We have what's called a box plot, and I think box plots might be my favorite kind of quick analysis because they're very visual and it allows you to get a really good sense right away of, are these different or are they the same? What range do they cover? Are they consistent um, data? So on the y-axis for the box plot, you have the response variable again, your dependent variable, your y. And on the x-axis here, I've represented the three different samples. What's contained inside the box is the middle 50% of your data. So you've got the median, which is the horizontal line, and then the rest of the box above the median is your 25% data above that. Below the line is 25% of the data. And then the whiskers are what those are called that stick out the top and bottom of the box. Those cover the next upper 25% of the data or lower 25% of the data. So it lets you know, how tight is my data set? Is that box really small? 
Um, or is the box really big? Is there a lot of spread in my data? This is one way that you can start to get a, um, an idea for how variable is my test method. And then if you look over to sample three, what you notice is the two stars that are down below the box. Those are those two statistical outliers that we saw in the time series chart that were below the lower control limit. And those are identified here as stars. So you can start to see, like, I've got a really tight data set, but all of a sudden I have several of these wild data points. Does that matter? Would those cause a significant disruption to the customer using my product? They might, and so they might be very important for you to identify and understand. The third way that I've chosen to represent that same data is in a table format. So we've got a row for each sample, samples one, two, and three. N is the number of data points in each of those sets. And then you see a column for the mean, that's the average, uh, and you see a column for the standard deviation as well. The standard deviation is pretty similar for all of these data sets, but you can see that the means are different. And then the last thing in this table is the 95% confidence interval. And what that means is when you're analyzing data statistically, um, you can calculate the mean, but it's, an, it's a statistical estimate of the mean. And so the confidence interval tells you what is the bracket that is around that mean, so the below it and above it, and we have 95% 95, 95 of the time that mean is going to fall in that bracket. So that is what the 95% confidence interval is. So it's an important thing to keep in mind um, that your mean could vary within that bracket. Um, so, so that's why it's useful to look at the confidence interval. And with certain statistical plots that you create, the confidence interval a lot of times will be identified for you so that you see um, it could be somewhere within this range, but it's not necessarily one specific value. The last graph is just a regression plot. So this type of plot is used when you are trying to figure out what effect an X variable that you're controlling, an independent variable, has on your response variable or your Y. And so what you see is a series of data. In this particular graph, we have six data points. And there's a line that's been drawn. And so that's a best fit line. It's statistically derived that minimizes the error. Essentially, you can think about it as minimizing the distance between that line and the, data, and the collection of data points that you have. Out of this kind of graph, we get a couple of different things. One, we get an equation that actually describes that line. So you could say, well, if I had a controlled variable set point of x, what would I expect as my y? So that's really helpful. In the upper right-hand corner of this plot, there's also a box which includes a few parameters. These uh, r-squared and adjusted r-squared are known as the correlation coefficient and the adjusted correlation coefficient. In this particular case, the r-squared value is a little over 90%. That's actually a really good value for uh, a a goodness of fit estimate for experimental data. So these are some key uh, go-to initial ways to look at data and I would recommend that you look at all of these um, if you're uh, initially starting to look at a data set that you have. Of course different plot types are um, more appropriate depending on the quantity of data that you have. You wouldn't do a time series chart if you only had three data points for example. Um, but, uh, but these are really good places to start and to start to get familiar with and visualize, um, get your fingers into what that data actually looks like and start to see what story the data is telling you. Mm -hmm.